Okay, today we'll be looking at one of these guys. This happens to be an ignition coil, and I'll quickly show how you can test one of these while the vehicle is running. Let's say, for example, you're running on four out of six cylinders, or you're just not sure, and the car's running really, really rough, but you're pretty certain that it's not running on all cylinders. I'll quickly show how you can test this uh, coil pack while the vehicle is running, as well as taking the coil pack out of the vehicle or while the vehicle is off. I'll show how you can quickly test one of these guys. It's pretty simple in fact. Now, of course the first step is finding the ignition coils on your vehicle. Now in this case we have three ignition coils under this cover and just so you guys have a good view I'm going to remove this front cover but we have uh, coils two, four, and six. So in other words that cylinder two, four, and six under this guy under this cover and then in the back we have cylinder one, cylinder three, and cylinder five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So what you want to do in your case is test each ignition coil. So the first thing that we'll do is a power balance test. What that is essentially is turning on the car and then disconnecting the ignition coil. If we hear a decrease in RPMs, then you know that the ignition coil on that cylinder is firing. And you'll do that test on every one. So let's start by removing this front cover and on this Maxima these are star type screws. If anyone's curious this is size T25. Now for this first test what I'm going to do is start the car and I'm going to disconnect this coil pack right here. This is for cylinder number two and we should see a reduction and hear a reduction in RPMs and the car will start to run sort of rough. The check engine light may come on uh, but this is what you want to do. So if your car is not running right you'll disconnect each coil pack and you should hear a reduction in the RPMs and it should be quite easy to spot in fact. Okay, so here it goes. I'm going to disconnect the coil pack now. And you can hear a sun reduction in the RPMs. So now we're back firing on all six. And then you have a reduction. And do the same thing. This is number four. And you hear a reduction in the RPMs. Now the car's running on five out of six cylinders. So you want to do this test with each coil pack. You have three in the front on this car, then there's another three on the rear. So again, here are your ignition coils, number two, four, and six in this case. What I'm going to do, so you guys have a good view of this, I'm going to disconnect the harness connector here. And then I'm going to remove these two small screws and remove the coil pack, we'll put it on the bench, and I'll show you how you can test this coil pack if the car is not running. And these happen to be eight millimeter screws. And then the coil pack comes right out. So we have the ignition coil on the bench, and what we want to do is a resistance or an ohms reading test. And to do that, of course, you need a multimeter. If you don't have one of these guys, you can pick them up at Sears, Home Depot, Lowe's, your local auto parts supplier. They're inexpensive, $15 to $20. That's all that they go for. And what we want to see here is some type of resistance reading uh, that tells us that this coil pack is in good shape. Now, in this case, what we need to do is, if you take a look on the inside, this is where the harness connector plugs in. And we have three terminals. In this case, we need to test terminal one and two. So this is terminal two. This is terminal one. Now with your specific vehicle, just do a Google image search. Very often you can pick up uh, which leads you need to test. Do a, a Google web search as well. Uh, very often you can really pick up which leads you need to test. So let's go ahead and take a look. What we should see here is anything above zero. So in other words, if we don't see a change here, this is bad. So we should see some kind of reading here telling us that the coil is good. So again, I'm going to touch terminal two and terminal one. So we'll put red to two, put black to one, and as you can see, we have 6.64 ohms. So this verifies that, that this ignition coil is in good shape. So you want to do this with every single coil on your vehicle. Of course, you don't have to remove the coil pack from the vehicle. 
I just did that so you guys have a clear uh, view of what we're trying to do here. And by doing this test, you can really pinpoint if you have a problem with the ignition coil if your car is not running. And that's all there really is to test the ignition coil. As you can see, anyone can do it at home. Uh, it's fairly simple. And just want to note two things. Number one is if you do this test on your ignition coils and you still have a problem, you're not running on all cylinders, check also the injectors. I do have a video uploaded on how to test injectors. It's very, very similar to the ignition coil test. And I show how to test the injectors while the car is on and while the car is off. Don't forget you need spark and you need fuel for the cylinder to fire. This, in this video, we're testing spark. Also want to test fuel if you're not running on all cylinders. So that's number one. The other thing I want to note is when you do the power balance test, that's the very, very first test, and you disconnect the harness connector. If nothing happens, just make sure that the harness connector is in good shape. In other words, that's the connection that plugs into the ignition coil. Very rarely, sometimes those wires back um, uh, in back of the harness connector can fray. Maybe uh, your car was uh, in a barn and mice chewed away at the wires. In other words, you want to make sure that those connections are good. In fact, I do have a video showing on how you can test if power is getting to those harness connectors. I'll include a link below. It's for uh, engine code P1320. And I, know speci and I show specifically on how you can test uh, each harness connector. It's not hard. It's pretty simple as well. So these are the steps you want to do if your car is not running on all cylinders. And then you can really pinpoint where the problem is.